Okay. Okay, so integers, we're gonna learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, okay? So with integers, um, so adding and subtracting, again, are gonna be probably your hardest, subtracting actually. The multiplying and dividing will be easy because it has the same rule. But with adding, so if I have negative three plus negative five, so with integers, I always think of money. I always think of money, and you can too, because everybody loves money, okay? Everybody loves money. So I always think of money. If it's negative, that means I owe somebody something, okay? So here I owe somebody $3, and then I might owe my mom $5. Oh no, since I owe my friend $3 and owe my mom $5, I have to come up with $8 somewhere. So I like to say I'm in the hole, $8. And when I'm in the hole and I owe that so much money to people, then it's represented by a negative. So you simply just have a negative eight, okay? So anytime you have like numbers like this, you can just think about money, okay? Another way, another example, negative five plus three. negative five, and I put parentheses around my negative numbers just to make sure you know that is a negative and not a subtraction sign. So in this case, I owe my friend five dollars, but I went to my piggy bank and I had three dollars. So positive numbers represent how much you actually have in your pocket. So if I owe my friend five dollars and I have three dollars, I can actually give three dollars to my friend, but I'm still going to actually owe her two more dollars. So if I still owe her two more dollars, remember owing money represents to be negative. So I still owe her two more dollars, okay? So that's how you can think of adding integers. That's how you can think of adding integers. Now subtracting integers, you can think of money as well. And remember, I put parentheses around my negative numbers to loop them together. You could still think of um, money. When, it, when you're subtracting, that means you're giving away money, right? You're owing somebody that money. So in this case, I've already started off in the hole. I already owe my mom $6. And now she's asking for three more dollars. I owe her another $3. So... In this case, I owe my mom now $9. So I already owed her $9. She's asking, because subtraction means that I'm giving away my money. She's asking for another $3. So now, six plus three, nine. Now I'm in the hole, $9. Okay, so think about subtraction that way. Eight minus 15. Remember, subtraction is giving away money, but in this case, I start with $8. I have $8 in my piggy bank, and now my mom is asking for $15 because I owe her $15. Well, so I give her my $8 in the piggy bank, but I still owe her seven more dollars. And since I still owe her seven more dollars, that is the answer to this. Eight minus 15. I have $8 but I have to give her 15. So I gave her my eight, but I still owe her $7. And owing money is negative. It's bad when you owe money. Okay, so now here's the tricky part with subtraction, is when you have two signs in a row. Um, so in this case, if you look here, you have a subtraction sign and you have a negative sign. Anytime you see this, before you start thinking about money, you need to do something. I taught it this way. I said that you had a line here and a line here, and you can take these two lines and actually form a plus sign, okay? So anytime you see that, where it's a subtraction sign followed by a negative sign, just remember, oh, there's a line, there's a line, I can take those two and actually make one shape with them, which is a plus sign. 
So I take those two and I make them the plus sign, okay? So I make them the plus sign. So I use that and that to make this, okay? And then I just bring the four down. And so now I can think about money again, and it's adding. So I owe my friend $3, but I have $4, okay? I owe my three fit friend $3, but I have $4. So I give my friend $3, and now I have $1 in the bank. So when you see that subtraction and negative sign side by side, just remember those two lines can make a shape called a plus sign. Seven minus negative one, okay? So again, we see it. We see that there's a subtraction sign and a negative sign side by side. So those two lines make a plus sign. And then we just bring down our numbers. So we have seven plus one. This is good for us. We have $7 in our bank. My mom just gave me $1 to give me in my bank. And so now I have $8 in my bank. That's a good situation. Okay, so that's how you add and subtract integers. I know I use small numbers, but you simply do the exact same. Like, I'm not gonna do it, but like if I had a big number, negative 532 plus 361, like if I had this, you could think about money. I owe somebody $532, but I have $361 in my bank. So, how much do I owe? So I give that person $361, but I'm still gonna owe them some money. So we know my answer is gonna be negative. And then however much more I owe them, that's how much it's gonna be. So you can apply this strategy to bigger numbers, okay? Now with multiplication and division, so um, you just gotta remember with this one, same sign, is positive, different sign is negative. So when we have, you know, seven times eight is 56. That's just normal, we know this, we know it's seven times eight is 56, so two positives equal positive. Now, what if I have negative seven times negative eight? It still equals positive 56, okay? So it still equals positive 56. You can remember with multiplication and division this saying, two wrongs make a right. Okay, not with addition and subtraction, but with multiplication and division, you can remember two wrongs make a right. Okay, and then it has to be two wrongs to make a right. If it's only one wrong and one right, then it's always going to be a wrong. It has to be two wrongs to make a right. So with this case, negative 7 times 8, since it's not two wrongs make a right, we know that it's going to be a negative 56. Okay, because it has to be two wrongs to make a right. Okay, so if it's not, your answer is always going to be negative. Okay, except for our simple 7 times 8 is 56. That's what we learned in when we were learning multiplication. We just worked with positive numbers, and our answers were always positive. So um, you have to remember that. But if you want to know the rule, you can do same sign is always going to equal positive and different sign will always equal negative. Um, so this is the actual rule for multiplication and division of integers. But remember, like I said, two wrongs make a right. If you don't have two wrongs, you know your answer is going to be negative. Okay? Besides the simple positive times a positive. Awesome job, guys. So that is the integer. Oh, well, let's do a division one just in case. So like um, if you did like negative 25 divided by positive 5. Well, 25 divided by 5 we know is 5. And we know our answer is going to be negative because one's negative and one's positive. So it's not two wrongs. So if one's negative and one's positive, it's always going to be a negative. Like I said, different signs equals negative always. Okay? Any questions about that? I'm going to pull you guys around.